Oh, thank you, Pam. Thank you, Pam. Happy trail You're welcome. to you, darling. <laughs> thank you. Uh, Mary and I'm alcoholic. I actually have a two sponsees and one of my shoulder to shoulders that are going cross country right now. And it's, it's really been a cool adventure to support and walk with them through this. And, um, you know, great events will come to pass for you and countless others. Pam plays banjo and, and was living on a boat and she's in a trailer on her way to up north to Alaska. And that's pretty cool. So Anyway, it's great to be here. It's great to be and an honor to be called back. So I must not have screwed up too much last time. Um, <laughs> and always great to see my friends up north. Um, Ali, we just love you guys so much. And Calvin and, and the work you guys do here that you've kept the light on for all of us and, and being able to connect with people from all over. And, and most always i was taught early on you know welcome 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 to the newcomer and and we just i hope you find something here that um that i've found that i know calvin and ollie and Teresa and peter and you know that we found countless others this place of grace this place of hope this place of oh my god how could you save a wretch like me and and I'm always undone by that, you know, anytime that um, I come into the rooms of Alcoholics Anonymous, whether it's on Zoom or whether it's a live meeting, I just can't believe it's my life. And that doesn't mean I'm rich and it doesn't mean I'm famous and that doesn't mean a whole lot, but it's the things that have happened on the inside as a result of this relationship with God, as a result of this working the 12 steps and giving away what's freely been given to me, freely been given to me with no cost, you know, with no grudges to bear a book talks about none of that stuff. Nobody speaking to me from a spiritual mountaintop or hilltop and speaking down to me, but always just that one drunk to a neck, shoulder to shoulder. And I love that. And, you know, early on in Alcoholics Anonymous was the first place, you know, everything I learned uh, that I know about life, I learned in Alcoholics Anonymous. When I came in the doors, it was like for the first time in my life, it was like for the first time in my life, I shut up and I listened. The old, old timers would say, you know, take the cotton out of your ears and put it in your mouth. And I could hear. I could hear a message of hope. I could hear a message of, oh my God, you know, seeing people would just, I just experienced this the other day of, um, we were up visiting, went to a wedding up in New Jersey and I came out of the shower and I'm upstairs putting on my makeup and I can hear Peter and our other friends downstairs and they're laughing and hooping and hollering and it's like, this is my life today. How does that happen? You know, that, oh, so anyway, so, so that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Um, my home group, it, group is Alcoholics and God in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. And I have a sponsor and I get the pleasure and honor of sponsoring women. And, and I've learned early on, I got to give it away to keep it. And, and, um, and I just know that for my life, as I've walked this walk that I can't outgive God, the more that I pour out in my life, the more God pours into me. And it's this, Peter sponsor talks about this, that it's, uh, you know, it's a matter of pitching and catching, you know, I look at your faces and I look at your eyes and you inspire me, you know, you inspire me and we can see that and we can feel that and we can um, grasp that somehow. And I just love that about God. I just love that about this fellowship. And, you know, <clears throat> last week, um, I was, I'm in Peter's office right now and I'm sitting in his chair and we have recently November or April 9th, we became husband and wife. And um, <laughs> thank you so much. And, um, 
And so a partnership that God had planned and a lot of trials and tribulations and, and things that have held back uh, the movement of that and finally coming into that place has been, has been a miraculous journey. It's been a miraculous journey. And um, as we've tended to walk, walk this walk, you know, shoulder to shoulder, it's like I bounce things off him. He bounces things off of me. And, you know, we, we walk this walk and, and work, you know, he's from Brooklyn. I'm from Bellingham, Washington. We could, couldn't be more different. But when, but when we join on this common journey, when we join in this fellowship of the spirit, our hearts unite. And, um, and from this place, from this place is this thing called grace. And it's not something I've earned. It's not something I deserve. It's not something that makes me better than anybody else. And it certainly doesn't make me any less than anybody else. At, um, you know, my sobriety date, I think I said it is November 11th, 1989. I've been sober 32 years on this journey, you know, one day at a time. And, and, um, and, and the longer I'm sober, the more I know that in myself and in my own self-will, um, that's a treacherous place to be. And the more I walk my life out with God and I'm connected with God, I don't like the feeling produced by self. I don't like the feeling produced by all the manifestations of self, because if alcohol is but a symptom of our disease, how other ways does it manifest in my life? Well, I'm not a gambler and I'm not a, you know, I'm happily, 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 happily married. And, you know, there's other ways that, you know, that my disease doesn't manifest. But what it, the way it does manifest is ways that you know, it describes in our big book, you know, selfishness, self-centeredness, a hundred forms of fear and self-delusion, you know, an actor trying to direct the show. And whenever I'm running on that fuel, I'm empty on the inside. And that's what I can't bear. That's what I can't stand. That's what smells bad and feels bad and 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 it's like glory to you god i can come right back to you because after all he's deep down inside of every single one of us and it's just a matter of me coming right back into that conscious contact coming right back into that conscious contact and so that's a long way of saying how I walked into Peter's office and I'm looking for a topic and I grabbed his 12 and 12 and um and and this paragraph jumped out at me and most specifically that line and um and it just touches on things I've been reading lately I just finished this book and I'm going to read a little bit out of that um but but more clearly than anything the word that that's just kick, just keeps coming to me is kingdom you know we can be in this world but not of this world this world's hard to bear this world's hard to bear for me in my selfishness and my self-centeredness in my actor trying to direct the show in all those manifestations of alcoholism which is a mental illness grave emotional mental disorder it says that i have i'm until i leave this beautiful planet which when i see it through god's eyes when i see it through that place it's gorgeous and it's fabulous. So that word that came out to me, that stuck out to me in this was the word kingdom that I can live. You know, we, we say it all the time in the Lord's pray, prayer, you know, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. But I can live in that kingdom unaffected by the things of the world. Unaff and, and I don't mean like the world's a terrible place. Please don't get me wrong. You know, one of my fabulous favorite um, acronyms for G-O-D is the great outdoors. You know, 
I, I walk every morning and I listen to the birds and I see the butterflies and I see the, those, those things that were made by God for my pleasure, for our pleasure. So getting to this, I'm going to read the whole paragraph and I'm just going to stop as spirit leads me. But it says this. And here's, it's so true. There's a direct linkage among self-examination, meditation, and prayer. Taken separately, these practices can bring much relief and benefit. But when they're logically related and are interwoven, the result is an unshakable foundation for life. See, when I'm doing self-examination, See, my troubles are of my own making. My troubles are always of my own making. When I'm looking at you to change, if, I, um, if I'm not the problem, I can't get the solution. If I'm waiting for any circumstance, anything to change, the problem always arises out of me or my reaction to it. So it says... Um, Taken separately, these practices can bring much relief and benefit, but when they're logically related and interwoven, the result is an unshakable foundation for life. This is my foundation for life. And, you know, uh, uh, I, our big book talks about a new triumphant art in, in arc in step three that I'm going to, I'm going to pass through for, for this foundation for life. And have I tried, you know, in our fifth step, it talks of, have I tried to build mortar without sand? You know, it's on and on and on about our foundation for life. And what are the things that we're doing to build on that, to build on it? You know, this book I'm reading talks about, um, you know, we can't go without air, we can't go without shelter, we can't go without sunshine, but I also can't go for, I can't go without the things that feed my soul today, whether it's, it's the prayer, the, the continuous inventory of self-check inventory of, of all that stuff. Those are my foundations for life. So now and then, here comes the line. Now and then we may be granted a glimpse of that ultimate reality, which is God's kingdom. You guys know what I'm talking about. Because if you've been in God's kingdom and you know what that feels like and you know what that sounds like and you know that peace that's deep down inside of every single one of us, when we get to connect in there, it's like, I don't want to leave. I don't want to leave. And, um, you know, today hasn't been the easiest day you know I, we have a very peter's one of, of somebody that peter drank with many many years ago a, a man that is Polly d from new york who moved here to south florida you know he went into the loving arms of god today and this man had a big book in his arm and he had during covid he had meetings on his stoop and he was full of the joy of God. He was, you know, one of those men that he stood there fresh in it, skin and glowing, you know, and he, he carried this message and he passed on today. He went into the kingdom. He went into the glory of God. And, you know, for a minute, I just felt like, you know, my heart was so sad. And I'm like, how am I going to do that meeting tonight? And it, instantly it was like, I can hear Polly's voice like, Miss Marion, where do you think God would want you to be tonight? Where do you think God would want you to be tonight? And um, a man who carried this message well, and any of you who know him, you know what I'm talking about. And if you didn't, he'll be one of those heroes that we all talk about in the, the ones in the big meeting in the sky, right? So it says, Now and then we may be granted a glimpse of that ultimate reality, which is God's kingdom. And we will be comforted and assured that our own destiny in this realm will be secure for as long as we try, however faltering to find and to do the will of our own creator, to find and to do the will of our creator. 
And guys, I'm going to mess it up. Guys, I'm going to, you know, we pause when agitated and doubtful or doubtful. Gosh, I always forget agitated. I can pause pretty good there. Doubtful, I'll kind of go on a hunch and come back on the hunch. Doubtful, oh crud, I should have stopped, you know, darn it. And, you know, things like that. But I can, I can reassure you and I can tell you that, that this long in sobriety, I know that I've been given this gift of the kingdom that I get a taste of, that I get a glimpse of. So I want to read this from this other book I've been reading that I love so much, if you don't mind. And it says this. It says, this is a passage to read and reread because every generation has tried to dim the blinding brightness of its implications. Those of us scarred by sin are called to closeness with him around the banquet table. The kingdom of God is not a subdivision for the self-righteous or for those who lay claim to private visions of doubtful authenticity and boast they possess the state secret of their salvation. It is for larger, homelier, and lo less self-conscious people who know they're sinners because they've experienced the yaw and pitch of mortal struggle. The men and women who are truly filled with light for those who have gazed deeply into the darkness of their own imperfect existence. And I love that. This was written by a man who was a Jesuit priest and he just thought if he just followed the the ways of Mother Teresa that surely he'd be enlightened and and ended up hitting a bottom as a hopeless drunk in the streets of Fort Lauderdale, Florida, on a corner where a woman kicked him and said, said to her daughter, pass him by and kicked him. And how many of us know that feeling and know that desolation and know that stuff? But here's this loving God who gives us this free handout of grace, who gives us this free handout of his kingdom, not because we earn it and not because we deserve it, any of us, you know? And I don't know about you, but, um, there was always this place in my life as an alcoholic where I would compare myself to other people. Well, I'm just not good enough like those girls who have God. After all, they get the Barbies, they get the bikes, they get the bows in their hair. What about me? You know, and then there's the ones that I could pass by that possibly in AA that I would think, well, I'm a little better than them. And, and I'm going to tell you, that's a soul killer for me. It's always a soul killer for me. I'm not, you know, the, the great equalizer in Alcoholics Anonymous, this God who has this furious love for me, that he's going to seek me out, that he's going to seek us out, not because Peter's got his poop together or Ali's got his poop together, but just because he is that calls me by name, that knows every hair on my head, that needs, knows every screw up I've ever done. So as my big book has charged me to do, as my life has charged me to do, to live this life of surrender with God himself, with this place that is per, as personal to me and to my touch as it is, it is as personal to you in your touch the realm of the spirit his kingdom you know the big big book talks about um not being able to see the kingdom of god unless we come to him like a child coming to him like a child with childlike faith i don't know you know i don't, i was talking to some youngins about god this morning you know and it's not because it's for academians and and being able mm -hmm. to you know come to this god and earn it or deserve it and um and i was thinking about this kingdom the the big big book also talks about the bible talks about i'll say it by name you know, in his kingdom is righteousness, peace, and joy. What is righteousness? Well, that's becoming right with God. That doesn't mean I'm self-righteous. It means I'm God-righteous. 
there's no righteousness in me at all. The more I, the longer I'm sober, the more I don't know how to deal with things. You know, God, please help me make the meatloaf. You know, can I? <laughs> you better put it in the oven, honey. Uh, you know, things like that. Things like that. I love the effect produced by God. I love the effect produced by that daily surrender. I love that effect produced by um, by the surrender to this power. And I don't, you know, I don't, I don't get, I don't know why I get to get back to him. And that I even think, you know, I, it's even taking the credit for getting back there. I screw it up enough every time and my back is up against the wall. And it's like, and then there's the days I was talking to these youngins this morning too about this, you know, it's like, there's the days I'm firing on all cylinders and I'll do the same prayers I did in the morning. And it's just a glorious day. And I can do the same prayers the next day and I'm falling on my face. I, you know, I think, you know, they used to tell me the early days of AA, you know, God loves drunks. Why? Cause we're just so fun to watch. You know, we're just so fun to watch. We stumble and we and we fall and we pick ourselves back up. But that's what this community is about. You know, this is what God always planned for us was to lean on each other and knowing that we needed each other. Getting on Zoom and figuring out how to do that and get us through. Oh, my God, that was the spookiest thing ever when this first all started. You know, it was like how, you know the little meetings I would complain about, the little share meetings or whatever. It's like, God, I wish I was there, you know? Because that's what I need. That's what this hopeless drunk needs today. So, so a prayer I've been resting with too. It comes out of this book. And if you wanna know, we'll talk about it later. There's a place I call home. There's a place I call center. There's a place where Dr. Bob had it in his humility, prayer of humility, of uh, finding that home and that peace inside, you know? And um, I know that's my true north, is this God inside of me, not swayed by whether you give me a compliment, not swayed by whether you don't like anything I have to say not moved by the plans of people, not moved by the plans of anyone, but that place in home that says, a word I, that, I, that I found in this was uh, Abba, which is a word for God, right? Abba. And it's a med meditation I just have been working with. That's like, it's, it's, it's the same as our breath. It has the same syllables as our breath. And you breathe in. Abba, I belong to you. So the distractions come and the dismays come and the fears come. Abba, I belong to you. You know, and that's what the deal is. That's 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 the prayer I use today. There's there's many of them, but it's one that's just been really sitting with me lately. And um, this gentleman that was a drunk, that was a Jesuit priest, <laughs> that got kicked on the side of the road. What he had done is he had brought it to this woman who was just deeply, deeply wounded. And he said, sit with it. Don't add anything to it. Don't take anything away from it. You know, that's our God. That's our father, our father who art in heaven. You know, and... Um, and we're definitely not people that are here to not be all inclusive or, or cause any division. But I can tell you, um, I have a friend that I was told today when she was, when she was in that uh, place today. When my friend Polly was called home and she had an experience with Polly you know, an experience with God and, and, um, and this is just my experience, strength and hope. I can tell you that I've, I felt the power of that God 
um, in cathedrals. I used to sing in, and I sing in, I've sang in big cathedrals and I felt the presence of God there. And when I got married that day, when I stood there with Peter and this beautiful sanctuary, I felt God's presence there. And when I've been in my own childbirth and witnessed the birth of my own births of my own grandchildren, I felt that presence of God there. And when I've sat at a with the passing of my father, my dad, I felt felt the presence of that God there. And in the rooms of Alcoholics Anonymous, when I've knelt on my knees and I've done a third step with an alcoholic, I've done it live in a meeting before. I remember a couple drunks walking into the Northwest group of Alcoholics Anonymous where I was raised the first 20 years of my sobriety. Who's this God? I gotta get this God now. And these two people kneeling right in the middle of the meeting. I need that God right now. And I feel the presence of that God right there. See, God doesn't make too hard of terms for those who seek him. His kingdom is, lies within each and every single one of us, every man, woman, and child. I just had this uh, experience recently. And, and it was like this, that, I don't know, maybe I'm right, maybe I'm wrong. Deep down inside every man, woman, and child is a fundamental idea of God, right? When we go outside and it's cold, we get goosebumps, right? But remember the God bumps that we get? Have you ever noticed that they come from the inside out, not from the outside in? And have you ever noticed the things that give me goosebumps may not give you goosebumps. You might like to listen to a good rap song and it gives you a goosebump. You know, I love Naomi Judd, you know, or whatever. Um, that came from the inside out. And some of the things I say and the, some of the things that move my heart may not move you. I know Pam's moved by banjo music, you know. I know Ollie's got his prayers he does and Peter's got his things he does and Calvin and, and Teresa and every single one of us or Roger or whatever. That came from the inside out, deep down inside every man, woman, and child, the fundamental idea of God. That's where the kingdom manifests righteousness peace and joy you know i was talking to these youngers this morning and it was like talking about the promises actually of the third step we enjoyed peace of mind you know it's like what peace of mind peace of mind and of spirit and um i owe all of that to alcoholics anonymous i owe that all that to this god of my understanding and God that I'll spend the rest of my life trying to understand. And this prayer today might be a different prayer tomorrow and, and all that stuff. But guess what? That, that, that union is mine. That union with God, that communion with God is mine. And yours is yours. And I hope you find him. And I hope you find him now if you haven't. So thank you for letting me speak tonight. It's great to be back with y'all. And just love you so, 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 so much. Thanks.